If you're an adventurous spirit who loves the thrill of hitting the open road on your motorcycle, then you know that food is an essential part of the experience. But when it comes to moto camping, you need meals that are not only delicious, but are also easy to prepare and pack. In this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 simple dinner ideas that I've used on my moto camping adventures so that you can spend less time planning and more time out in the wilderness. And whether you're a seasoned camper or a newbie, these meals are sure to satisfy your hunger and fuel your next adventure. And maintaining daily nutrition is super important for keeping those energy levels up, not only while camping, but for everyday well-being. If you found yourself feeling a bit sluggish, or struggling to focus, or feel that your gut health could do with some improvement, then I have just the thing for you that will help you perform your best. This video is so graciously sponsored by AG1, and trust me when I say that this stuff is a game changer. Sustainable routines are key, and AG1 makes it easy to absorb key nutrients, lead a healthy lifestyle, and feel your best no matter what the day holds. With just one scoop, one minute, once a day, AG1 provides nutrients that supports and sustains healthy energy levels. Now I've had other supplements in the past that I just used to dread. <laughs> I used to dread the time that I would have to take it because it just tastes so bad. This, I look forward to taking it in the morning. First thing in the morning on an empty stomach, boom, one scoop, just shake it for 20 seconds down the hatch. AG1 contains ingredients critical for keeping athletes and high performing individuals like us moto campers in the zone by supporting the brain and focus. AG1 also have super convenient travel packs so that while you're out in the wilderness, you can still start your day the right way while enjoying nature. So if you're ready to take your health and performance to the next level, then make sure you hit the link in the description below to grab yourself a year's supply of immune supporting vitamin D3, K2 and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. Get amongst it, it works wonders, I love it. Woo, thank you AG1, you're the best. I'll be arranging the recipes in order of simplicity, so starting simple and then working our way down to something more gourmet and delicious, with some pros and cons to each meal. And also I'm no chef by any means. If you're a chef or if you're a really good cook or if you have any more tips or something that you can add to the discussion, please drop a line in the comments below. I'd love to see how you guys do things as well while you're motor camping. Now I have a few different cooking utensils that you'll see me using throughout this video. I use a firebox stove and I moved to the 360 burner. I have a grill as well. I feel like there's no right or wrong way of doing this. If you just want to cook on a fire, just do that. Happy days. I guess the basic setup that you would need is something to boil your water in and something to cook your meat in and yeah, you're pretty much good to go. I highly recommend getting some tongs or chopsticks. Chopsticks are handy if you don't want to bring tongs along with you. You can use chopsticks to pick up things, to eat with, to stir. They almost just act like a pair of tongs, but I do use tongs all the time. I've got like a little mini set. I did find with the 360 degree burner that if you're going to cook steak with a pan, I don't think it's really made for cooking. So if you're going to do it, lower the gas right down to low and the pan heats up really nicely and evenly. Otherwise, you're just going to sear the steak and you're probably going to burn it before it even starts cooking right through into the middle. I've made that mistake myself. But it's great at boiling water. It does it really fast, which is good. And for the pan, I've got a tiny little six inch hiking pan. It's very light. The handle folds in, so it's super handy. It's a little bit smaller than my other one that I used to have, but the other one is just too big. So I've downsized. Everything's about downsizing and getting a little compact setup happening. And this is the cooler bag that I use. It's pretty good. It's by, what is it, Ice Mule. It's, it does get a bit big though. Like it is, that is huge. Look at it. <laughs> It's monstrous. Um, I would like to have a smaller one that works just as well. It does work pretty good. Any cooler bag, as long as it holds the cool, coolness in there. Just get a cooler bag for your meat and all your good stuff. Dairy, cheese, handy as. Oh, your beers as well, of course. To start us off, dehydrated meals. All you'll need is a pot, a kettle, or a jet boil for boiling water, and something to stir with. That's it. Pour hot water up to the level indicated on the packet, let it sit, tear it open and start eating that bad boy. The pros is super quick and simple, lightweight, has a long shelf life and the bags are very durable. There's no bowl or plate needed. You can eat it straight out of the bag and it's full of nutrition. The cons, they can be pretty expensive at $20 a packet. Unless you get a deal, you might get like a two for 20 or two for 30 or something like that, but they do get pretty pricey. They don't taste as best, especially the breakfast ones. Pretty sloppy, pretty bleh. But don't get me wrong, there are some really nice ones out there as well. And also you sort of miss out on the whole cooking experience, you know, like it's a very simple, quick, easy way to make food and be sustained for the whole day. But you know, that's what you sort of doing, just adding in water, you're not cooking over a fire and having a, a good old time. I like that experience. But whatever, each their own. Next up, soup and toast. 
Super simple, super simple, hey? Candy soup, two slices of bread and butter. All you need is a pan or a small pot. Empty the contents into the pan or the pot. Heat up for five minutes, transfer it to your bowl. Toast your bread in a pan, apply the butter and enjoy. Pros, it's quick and easy and it does keep you nice and warm on a winter's night. The cons are that it can get a bit weighty with just a big can of soup in your backpack and your bread can get a bit squished as well. So I like to use just a little hard Tupperware container, really sling line that you can sort of put your bread in and then that just, you know, protects it from being all squished up. Steak or sausage and veggies or both steak and sausage, why not? For this, I like to try and keep my veggies simple. Ones that are easy to cook, you don't need to really boil them or steam them or blanch them or anything like that. I do broccolini every now and then and I do just add a little bit of water and just let them blanch a little bit for a little while until they get nice and green and they get all soft and you can add some soy sauce or some sesame both and then you know you got some real delicious veggies going on otherwise i just get zucchini or asparagus and mushroom and just sort of fry it all with the steak and everything at the same time pros it's very simple and tasty and yeah you can't go wrong with a steak and three veg cons are that you have a chance of squishing your veggies so i put mine in my cooler bag the cool thing about this the cooler bag man i'm full of these puns today what the hell's going on here the cool thing about this cooler bag is that there's a valve in it. So you crack that and then the it's like the internals sort of puff up. And I guess that acts as some sort of protection, but then it does take up more space as well. But you know, I don't know. You can get little Tupperware containers as well and put your veggies in there if that works for you. Number four, a burger. Have a burger. Grab yourself a tomato, lettuce, cheese, beef patty, and what else you would like or what else you'd like to have on there. Vegetarians have a big fat mushroom patty on there. That's, I do like mushy burgers anyway. Grill or fry your patties, slice your tomato, grill the buns, add cheese to the patties while on the grill, assemble it and enjoy. Boom. You can add anything else you want on there, maybe some onions or something like that, uh, mustard on the bun, mayo if you want to put that on the bun as well, gourmet it up a little bit, make it a little bit special for you. But yeah, it's pretty simple as well, which is a pro. It's very extremely tasty, uh, especially cooking the meat over the fire as well. You get that really nice smoky taste. I like using the grill for the patties for this. The grill, by the way, um, obsolete. <laughs> Can't find them. This one that I have is very good there, so I will try to find one and link in the description below, along with all the other utensils that I use in case you want to check them out as well. And the cons is that it can get a little bit messy dealing with the meat and everything. I'd highly suggest taking a latex glove or something, a disposable glove, so that you can just handle the meat and once you're done with it, just dispose of it. Yeah, especially when handling chicken, which we'll get to in a little bit, definitely take a glove for that. You don't want, you know, salmonella all over your fingers. That's not very nice. You got food poisoning from that restaurant. <laughs> and once again, your lettuce and tomato can get squished, so make sure you put that in a nice safe spot in your bag. Grilled salmon and asparagus. Ooh, baby, we're getting there. We're getting to the gourmet technical. Mm -hmm. You need salmon fillet, asparagus, cherry tomatoes, and lemon. Drizzle some olive oil in a warm pan. Season your salmon. Skin down first to get it nice and crispy. Throw your cherry tomatoes and asparagus in. Give it a little jiggle. Squeeze some lemon in. After a few minutes, turn your fillet over for a further minute or so. Serve and enjoy. Pros is that it's a very, very tasty gourmet meal. And if you like to go fishing, if you can take a fishing rod on your bike, which people have asked me to do, I just don't, I just don't know how I would do it. Cook your own fish? How good would that be? Boop. And have your asparagus, cherry tomatoes, and man, you'd be like the king of the jungle. <laughs> Uh, it's healthy as well, which is a bonus. Cons is that if you're taking your own fish with you, depends what cut you get. I had a big salmon one here. It's pretty expensive. That was like, I don't know, probably almost $30 or something. Also, you run in the risk of having stinky, smelly fish run through your bags and stuff like that. So holy crap, make sure you have something really good, like a nice good cooler bag, fully sealed up, heaps of ice in there, especially on a hot day. Beef skewers. For this, you'll want some beef, capsicum, mushrooms, zucchini, and some salt. You prep your veggies, cut them into bite-sized pieces, eat some of it while you're prepping. Here I'm using the ribeye tail. You can ask your butcher for this cut. It's sort of like an off cut or something. It's a lot cheaper than your normal ribeye fillet. Still tastes damn fantastic. Super tender, super juicy, really, really good. Stick it on the skewer, drizzle some olive oil over them, season with plenty of salt, cook for four to five minutes on each side, and be careful, the skewers, if you're using metal ones, and I highly suggest using metal ones so they don't just burst into flames while you're cooking. They do get mega hot, obviously. I've, I've just been, I've had one of those moments. I'm like, ah, oh, sick, and I'll just grab it and it just melts like a, a metal line in my thumb. So be careful of that. Use the tongs, all the chopsticks. Sorry about the tongs there. 
Pros, it's very tasty, super enjoyable to prep and very hearty as well. Cons, again, the meat situation, just bring a glove or prep at home. Spaghetti bolognese. What you'll need is pre-made bolognese and pasta. Add salt to your water, bring the water to the boil, add your pasta in, cook till al dente, add bolognese and stir in until warm. Bring along some grated parmesan cheese if you want and eat it straight out of the pot to save washing up later. Uh, the pasta I use is like a nice three minute one. You can buy them at the supermarket. Just chuck it in there so it saves you gas. You're not gonna just be there for 10 minutes just waiting for this damn pasta to boil. Depending how big your pot is, you might have to do the sacrilege thing and break them. Sorry, Italians. <laughs> I'm Maltese. I know my, you know my family is like, what are you doing? What, what? But like, you know, we're camping, we, we, we do what we want, we do what we have to do. The pros for this is probably the, this is probably the easiest meal to make, aside from the dehydrated meal pack, whatever. Everything's done. You're just boiling pasta, basically, and then just heating everything up. Man, it tastes so good, though. Like, day after pasta, you know what I'm saying? Day after bolognese, mm-hmm. Full flavor, full juicy goodness bring on the spaghetti bolognese. The cons is that it can get pretty messy, like you're dealing with all the sauce and everything like that. And there's a bit of cleaning up. Most of the time, or every time that I've done it, the pasta just gets stuck on the bottom a little bit and it's just literally like rock hard and you can't get rid of it. You have to let it soak overnight and even still it's a bit of a nuisance. You have to come home and get the scourer and just really clean that up. Grilled chicken skewers. So for this, you want some veggies. I'm using zucchini, mushroom, chicken, capsicum, tzatziki sauce, and pita bread. Prep the skewers much like the beef skewers, this time one with chicken and one with veggies for various cooking times. Season to taste. A little tip, you might want to marinate the chicken the night before, let it just all set in like a bag or something like that. Cook it for a few minutes on each side until the chicken is no longer pink on the inside. Best to cook over hot coals rather than the open flame to prevent charring. Dish up inside the pita bread. You can also warm the pita bread on the grill for a minute or so. Here I dial up the tzatziki sauce on top of the chicken. In future, I'll probably try spreading it on the pita first. I think that'll just, you know, give it a nice all-rounding taste of, you know, balanced balance cohesion <laughs> cohesion do a much better job at wrapping it up than me holy crap and enjoy that bad boy the pros is it's tasty it's different it's super high in protein and it'll keep you going for days on end <laughs> well not really you know what I mean. The cons is that you're dealing with chicken. So again make sure you got a good cooler bag full of ice you don't want that going foul. Oh my gosh did I just do it again? I don't, know, I don't know what's happening here. But you know what I'm saying. You don't want it to go all off and stinky. And also wear gloves for sure. Make sure the chicken's cooked right through, please. No pink. You don't want any pink. Cooked right through chicken. Number nine, we're having chili prawn noodles. For this, you want chili, butter, garlic, and Asian style noodles. Finally, chop the garlic, heat some water in your pan, and add noodles until soft, about one minute. Transfer the noodles to a bowl, drizzle some olive oil in the pan, add the garlic and cook until fragrant, about one minute. And then add the pre-peeled prawns, add a dollop of butter, finally chop your chili and add it all in. Add the noodles and stir until your prawns are nice and golden. Season to taste and enjoy. This was probably one of the tastiest meals. So that's a pro for sure. Cons, you're dealing with prawns. <laughs> uh, can get expensive and, you know, again, fishy, fishy sauce going through your bags and everything. Heaps of ice, good bag, have a good time. It was actually the first time I've ever cooked raw prawns and it turned out, they turned out ridiculously good. Man, it was so tasty. I had too much as well, but I ate it all because I'm a big fat boy. And finally, gourmet hot dogs. You'll want hot dog buns, grated cheese, gourmet hot dogs, sliced pickles, mustard, tomato sauce if you want, an onion, and some of those mini capsicums or peppers. You guys call them peppers, we call them capsicums. Cook sausages in your pan or on the grill. Dice your onions, slice your mini capsicums or peppers lengthwise. Crack a beer. <laughs> Crack a beer. Add onions to the pan, cooking until softened, about two to three minutes, and add everything into your bun. Top with mustard, better than I have definitely, and enjoy. I want one of those little little sauce bottles. I want to get one of those little guys. I've been looking for them everywhere, I just can't find them. But that'll be handy. Little sauce bottle, put your mustard in there and do like a nice little Pros, very tasty. It's a gourmet camping meal, so you know, you can be like, hey guys, look at me. I'm camping, but I've got a really delicious, hearty, juicy, delicious 
delicious meal. <laughs> it was so delicious. Cons, your bread can get squished and it's a few extra things to bring. Well, there we go. There's 10 meals for you to take away and maybe improve on. <laughs> take this and make it better, please. I try to change my meals every time I go camping. Well, not every time, but I try to change it up a little bit instead of eating the same thing all the time. So I'm just experimenting. I'm trying new things, you know. I understand that the things, you know, the prawns and stuff might be a bit too much, but it tastes so good, especially having an open fire. Just everything tastes so good when you're camping. So if you have anything to add, please do so. Let me know in the comments below. Um, share your thoughts with everybody. I feel like we could all take from this and make our moto camping dinners and experiences a little bit nicer with your input, especially if you're a chef. Holy crap, that'd be so sick. If you're a chef and you moto camp, I would love to know what setup you have and like the cooking tools that you use because I'm sure that there's some cool things that we just don't know about that you guys are just absolutely, you know, absolutely killing. You'd be, I reckon you're killing it. Don't hold out on us, guys. Come on, let us in. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Thank you so much to AG1 for sponsoring this video. Seriously, if you guys want an energy boost, if you're feeling all laggy and everything, this stuff just keeps you going. It actually works wonders. It's so good. So thank you, AG1. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next vid. Woo! Peace!